Bona tarda. Good afternoon. Well, I know I'm the boring part of this session. I don't have funny videos. I, I, I don't know jokes. I don't know how to draw. I don't, I, I'm not singing. So I've been asked to address the question and the relationship between creation process and science. Um, creation process and science. And I put a title to my talk, which is, are the scientists creators? In fact, after listening to the previous speakers, I, now I would like to change the title. I will put, what is doing someone like you in a place like this? <laughs> but anyway, what do you think about this, this question? Would you include a scientist in a group in the concept of creation? What do you think about? Can you raise hands, those of you thinking that a scientist could be considered a creator? Please. OK. I have a lot of job to do today. Well, I must admit that my first opinion about this question was a clear no. I thought, there is nothing to do between a creator, like a master, like uh, Mr. Aldo Ma, who is one of the best uh, sculptors from Reus, and a scientist. And I based my conclusion in a couple of points. One of them is the meaning of the word creation. Creation is a process that starting from nothing, from scratch, from a very primitive materials, at the end of this process, you have something. You have produced something. You have an object. And I thought, well, are the scientists doing things like this? Well, in fact, scientists, what we do is just observing. We observe the world. We observe the nature. We observe the life elements like cells. And we want to know exactly the basis of this life. We try to discover, discover something that is already there. We are not producing anything new. We are discovering, we are trying to understand something that is hidden inside of these materials. We want to know, don't worry about this slide, which are the pathways maintaining the healthy state of an individual. Which pathways get wrong when someone is ill? We want to know all this. So somehow, we could face the concept of creation as something, a process producing something new, and the process of science trying to discover something that is already there. We are not producing new things. We are just trying to discover things that are in, already in the place. The second aspect that I consider makes differences between creation and science was about the methods. And creators, and we have had some examples this afternoon, creators need some, let's say, esoteric uh, uh, forces supporting the process. Creators use things like inspiration, like improvisation, geniality, they need some drops of geniality and the, and the set of all these things all together. At the end, produce the masterworks. They produce, at the end, the pieces of art. Music, like Joan Rech, uh, poetry, uh, any kind of literature, uh, fashion, or paintings masterworks like this one that this year we could observe in our city. What about scientists? Well, scientists, we have to balance probably some part of creativity, but of course, we have to balance the creativity with a lot of credibility. We have to work using methods 
that must be accepted by the scientific community. We could not say, I discovered this because I had an inspiration and the Musa came to my brain and then I said, well, this is the solution of cancer, for example. So we have to balance our methodology using those methods that have been homologated by the scientific community. Otherwise, our results will not be readable. The frame containing all these rules of our methods are defined by something referred to the scientific method. Scientific method was a methodology that was defined about two centuries ago, and all the scientists used this kind of approach to their uh, processes. And when I arrived to this point, I changed my mind. I said, well, why scientists are not creators? Because we have to use a very specific method? Well, what about musicians, for example? To produce their works, they have to use a limited number of musical notes written in a five lines of a pentagram. And with these tools, they create an opera, for example, a concert. So everyone has limitations in the way they work. So from this, I thought, well, probably there are more points in common between science and creativity. And I said, yes, of course, and the first one is a very important one. Scientist and also any creator starts his work from the idea. So the beginning of any scientific or any creation process is an idea. And this is common between creation, any creation process, and science. And where we take these ideas from? I am in the field of biomedical sciences. I am a physician. And of course, that my ideas come from the observation of my patients and from the observation of the diseases of my patients. When we see our patients with their problems, what we want is to improve his hair quality of life, his health. So we obtain the ideas from the observation of our patients. I am involved in cardiovascular prevention. I try to understand how the heart attacks are produced, trying to avoid them. And my approach to this question is through the analysis of molecules circulating through our blood that get stuck into, attached into the uh, inner part of the arteries. These red tubes are arteries. The arteries conduct our blood across the body. And there are molecules that go there, blocking and occluding these arteries, avoiding the pass of blood through these tubes. Of course, at the end of this artery with no blood, we will have a problem, a patient with a problem, a heart attack, if this happens in the heart. So we have seen our patient, we have identified the problem, we have an, a question to answer, then we put together our team to work designing the whole process of research. The process of research is constituted by a series of elements, a different uh, chain pieces that are composed by the disease, which is the first aspect that we consider. From the disease, we obtain, we, we obtain the idea, we uh, have our question there. We have to study a lot then, because otherwise probably we, we will be studying things that have been already uh, discover or study it. We launch our hypothesis. We enunciate our objectives. We enumerate them. We design how to approach this objective, the methods that we will use. We perform the experiments. We obtain the results. After the results, we analyze the results, and then we obtain a conclusion. In all this process, I would like that you think 
in how many of these stages, of these steps, creation takes part. I think that many of them. So there is something common with the creators. At the end, when we get the, 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 the conclusions, if we are lucky, we, we will contribute to increase the knowledge in the field. If we are very, very lucky, probably we can obtain something that could have some applicability to our patients. And this is a very important point. I'm going to show you an example of one of this process. I'm not going to use any of my experiments, experiments from my lab. I'm going to use an experiment that was performed 100 years ago. We are now celebrating the first century of an important theory. The theory that lipids, fat, can produce heart attacks. And this observation was made 100 years ago by this individual that you can see here in the picture, who, is, uh, who was a military physician from Russia, Nikolai Anatstikhov. This uh, physician knew that some of his colleagues had observed that some animal models from the lab, rabbits in this case, when they were fed with several, with different uh, foods, developed a lesion in the artery and had heart attacks. And he was interested in knowing which elements in this food could produce the development of the problem. So he defined many objectives, he designed all the scientific work and was testing all the hypotheses and he observed that finally the candidates were the eggs. The eggs, when, when they uh, gave eggs to the rabbit, the rabbit had heart attacks. But he did more than that. He separated the egg in the components, in the white part and the yolk of the egg, and observed that was the yolk, the yellow part, what produced the process. We know that the yolk is plenty of cholesterol, so the theory that cholesterol is bad for arteries and produce heart attacks was defined 100 years ago. Experiments similar to that, after years, have defined the fact that the heart attacks, that the health of the heart, is altered by not just one single thing, but by multifactorial things. So the heart attack is produced not just by, by, by lipids, by cholesterol, but also diabetes, tobacco, overweight, sedentary, hypertension. And nowadays, all this knowledge all put all together allowed us to give recommendations to our patients to prevent cardiovascular events. So this is a task that has been produced along years, just adding experiments plus experiments to give us the final, the final theory. At the end of our work, when we finish with all our conclusions, what do we produce? Well, in fact, the final product in general is the communication of our results to our colleagues. And we produce a scientific publication. This is very important because we are evaluated according to the number of scientific publications and the level of these scientific publications. However, these things are changing. And now, although these scientific publications are important to increase the scientific knowledge, it's important also for any researcher look for the applicability of their results. And now we are seeking things that could improve the care of our patients. For example, developing a new diagnostic test. Or, for example, describing a device that can be used to improve uh, a disease. Or uh, discovering a drug that can cure some uh, patients. So, 
at the end of our activity, we are not just contributing to science, but trying to produce something that has applicability, direct applicability to our patients. And this way of thinking is addressed to improve the quantity and quality of life of our patients and has been already adopted by those institutions that are involved in research. Now, universities, research institute that won the, 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 the researchers contribute to increase the knowledge, etc., now are moving to use their facilities, their researchers, to produce something that can contribute to wealth in the world, to increase the productivity, to produce money, to have some impact into the society. At the end of this process, if we activate the economy, we activate the money that is moving in our society, probably we also could collaborate increasing the number of jobs available. And this is one of the aims of many of the uh, sources that are uh, given to researchers to do research. So, this is my final, my final slide. The, like this little train, this is the train that goes to the Nuria Monastery. Uh, the way, so the, 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 scientific, the scientific process is long, is difficult, but as this trip is very interesting, very nice, from the starting point to the end. Thank you very much for your attention.